again, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, if you are a new member, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. If you're on the meeting with us tonight to kind of check us out and see what you think, thank you very much. We're um, glad that you decided to tune in. And we hope that the information that you uh, are presented with tonight uh, finds something interesting for you and that it is something that leads you to become a member of the Colorado Mountain Club and on to all sorts of different new adventures. So again, welcome, very glad to have you. So um, Colorado Mountain Club, what are we about? Who are we? Well, we started, believe it or not, in 1912. And so we've been around a few years. And um, our first trip, you see there on the screen, that was our very first trip. It was an outing that went to Cheeseman Park. Well, at that time, Cheeseman Park was way out on the eastern plains of Colorado. Denver was just a small town uh, down around the Platte River downtown. So it was actually a pretty good outing to go out to uh, Cheeseman Park and um, climb on some of the rocks that are around there. We've done a little bit of growing since then. We're over 7,000 members strong. Our Denver group is our largest group with over 4,500 members in it. We do have 10 uh, groups throughout the um, state. And I apologize, it says eight groups on the screen here. So um, we are at eight groups, I guess now. So again, um, throughout the state of Colorado, we love to connect all of you that love to do mountaineering uh, type of things, hiking, cycling, uh, mountain climbing, rock climbing, uh, ice climbing, all sorts of wonderful outdoor activities. And of course, you have a wonderful state to do that in. So again, 7,000 members strong. Uh, trained volunteer trip leaders and experienced co-hikers. That's one of the things that we pride ourselves on at Colorado Mountain Club. When you go out on one of our hiking trips or you go out on a cycling adventure or you go on um, to um, rock climbing or something where you have a trip leader. We are all trained. We are all volunteer. We don't, are, we're not paid by um, CMC, although I am a paid employee as well as Claire. And then we will hear from Josh, who is part of our YEP program, Youth Education, a little bit later. So we are all paid. But our volunteer trip leaders do this because they love to do this. They're also very trained. They all have for wilderness first aid training and other different uh, skill sets. And um, they are good at what they do when they get you out in the backcountry. Experienced co-hikers. By the time that you go out on most of our hikes, you're gonna be with people that usually have hiked quite a bit or um, are doing the rock climbing activities and um, other activities. So you're with um, experienced co-hikers and co-trip um, participants. Schools and courses. This is another thing that we pride ourselves on. We have schools and courses that are geared toward summer and winter. You see here that they are learning about some of the summer, or I'm sorry, the winter um, uh, activities and schools that they're looking at here and measuring. It feels like summer outside, unfortunately still, so uh, it's, it's hard to uh, anticipate that we are actually gonna get a Colorado winter. I hope we do at some point. Schools and courses, they go throughout the year. We're um, gearing up right now for all of our uh, winter courses and those are happening. Um, and uh, people are signing up uh, regularly with those right now. Adventure travel program. Well, as we all know, painfully so, we have been in the um, kind of everything's on hold stuff with um, COVID and the virus in the year um, 2020. We are looking at adventure travel kind of reopening. We're being very cautious and very careful how we open that, but we are looking at that we will have several trips happening in 2022. Everything from up in the left-hand corner, you see that this was a float trip uh, down through the Grand Canyon by way of the Green River. And then uh, they also do float trips um, up in Moab with the Green River also. And I'm sorry, the Grand Canyon is the Colorado River. I should remember my geography a little bit better than that. 
And then down in the lower left-hand corner, you're seeing a trip that uh, happened down in South America. And then over uh, on the big um, rock that you see there with the climbers that have summited it, this is over in Italy. So Adventure Travel Program will be underway in 2022. We get lots of feedback that it is an excellent program and people really enjoy it. Everything from hiking trips. Um, we have one very popular trip with a trip leader that everybody loves that they go and hike through the countryside in England and Scotland up to what you see here where you're going to do quite a bit of rock climbing and summiting of some mountains throughout the world. Well, it's our job to protect the mountains that we love with our conservation team. We all love being up in the mountains and doing activities, hiking, rock climbing, summiting. So uh, we need to give back to this wonderful state by way of preserving our wonderful um, outside with our conservation efforts. So you see here one of our volunteers that is maintaining, helping maintain one of the trails. And uh, we have a lot of volunteers that come on board to help out with that. And then we also have a conservation department that um, specifically focuses on that. Give back through volunteering. This is one of our strongest programs that we have in Colorado Mountain Club. Most of the people that you will encounter at the club, unless you come into the office where you'll see Claire and myself, and Josh from uh, Youth Education Program, or um, we're staff, but everybody else is volunteers. We have a wonderful amount of people that really love the state, really love to share that with other people, really love to teach skills, really love um, to lead trips and events, and uh, so they volunteer. It's easy to do so. We welcome you to email us at the office if you're interested in volunteering. Take a look tonight and maybe you'll get some ideas of different volunteering that you might want to do. Our youth education program is a wonderful uh, program to volunteer with, with people that are uh, interested in helping youth experience the outdoors. Another wonderful benefit for Colorado Mountain Club is our CMC member discounts. We have uh, close to almost 70 books in, um, in uh, press right now that have been published. You as a member now get 20% discount on our books. We have several very popular um, titles, including a new one that we just released called Wild Eats about um, campfire cooking and all sorts of stuff for outdoors. You have discounts on gears, gear and different gear brands with expert voice. If I could talk tonight, I might be dangerous. And discount at local retailers and Colorado gear shops in uh, Golden, we have Bent Gate, we have a couple other shops. And they are wonderful as far as maybe you decide you want to uh, try cross country skiing or maybe you want to try snowshoeing but you don't really necessarily want to buy all the equipment yet to see if you like it. Well, a lot of these shops, you can go in and uh, rent equipment from them, and they will give you a discount because you're with the Colorado Mountain Club. Spend special member pricing for our schools, our courses, and our trips. We have a wonderful um, class that's called WUFA. We put acronyms with everything, and it's Wilderness First Aid. If you're a member, the cost on that uh, is about $20 cheaper than if you're a non-member, and it tends to be a really popular class, and it's also one of our prerequisites if you want to go on to become a trip leader. Special pricing for the youth education courses. Josh will talk about that a little bit later here when we um, introduce him with the youth education program. Lodging discounts throughout Colorado, and then you have access to uh, wonderful CMC backcountry huts. Brainerd Cabin is up um, outside of Netherlands, and it has re you need to have reservations. And then the Richtjoa Cabin, uh, both of those you get discounts. Uh, the bottom one is a really popular one because that's going to be happening here soon. The Banff Film Festival it will be happening in March of next year down at the Paramount downtown and you get special discount pricing on the tickets to the Banff 
um, film festival. Mountain Fest and our Backcountry Film Festival, you also get discount tickets for that too. We were talking about the CMC Press. We're at about 69 titles, I believe, right now. We just added the new one that I just referred to a few minutes ago called Wild Eats. It's while you're out camping. And um, actually, I, I was showing it to a girlfriend about a week ago, and she says, well, never mind camping. I'm just going to use some of these recipes out in the fire pit out in the backyard. This looks like some really good recipes. And uh, up in the left-hand corner, one of my favorite ones, the Colorado Trail. This is a trail that goes diagonally from Denver down to Durango. It's about 480 miles. A lot of people will do segments of the trail. We have some people that do come in that will actually hike the whole trail. They usually spend the whole summer doing that. Um, but this is a wonderful guidebook to help you with different sections of it, tell you where water is, uh, where the nearest towns are. Um, the Best Front Range Hikes, that's over on the right-hand corner. That's another one of my favorite ones. It's a wonderful uh, book to refer to in case you don't have um, a lot of time to get to maybe a hike that is two or three hours away, but you have time to maybe go up outside of Boulder or Netherlands or down around Deckers and something like that. And you can look in the book and find a wonderful hike that's within a close proximity. Snowshoe routes. Well, if we ever get snow, that's one of our most popular books too during the winter. It shows you different routes that you can take to go out and enjoy some wonderful snowshoeing. So again, uh, 68 or 69 titles at this point and counting. They're available um, in the office or out uh, when you are on our website, the main page, cmc.org. You can click on um, books, the press, and it will take you into the site that you can buy the books on. Outdoor recreation. Well, you can see there, wishful thinking on our part. That looks like fun. That looks like a lot of snow. And hopefully, maybe within the next three to four weeks, we'll see some of that outside. And uh, this is a wonderful group of snowshoers that are out uh, learning how to snowshoe, learning to go through the backcountry, do that safely. And um, one of the things that we pride ourselves on is outdoor recreation, both summer and winter, and doing it safely. So again, our trip leaders will have wilderness first aid trip um, uh, certification under their belt so that they can help in case there were to be an emergency. And um, we have all sorts of different classes that are, are available. Uh, best way to find out about that is to go out and look on our website, cmc.org. Go out and um, just kind of explore and see some of the different options that we have. On our very front page, we have a scrolling um, updated calendar that will tell you the latest events that are coming up. And then we'll talk here in a few minutes about our actual CMC calendar. Specialty sections. As you can see, we have quite a few of them. They are sections that are geared toward uh, something that maybe you love to do. Maybe you like to do trail running. Maybe you're a, a trailblazer. You're in the 21 to 40 year old group. Or maybe uh, Rocky Mountain Over the Hill Gang. That sounds more like what you'd like to do. Or uh, photography. That's one of our popular sections. We'll talk about those in a sec. In the, here in a section in a second about the section, say that fast three times. And uh, we have all sorts of different things for your different interests. Rocky Mountain Over the Hill Gang. I have a lot of people say, well, why are you calling it that? That sounds like it's for um, an older, more mature uh, crowd. I always tell people that's not the case. Rocky Mountain Over the Hill Gang, uh, they like to go over the hill. So I dare you to keep up with most of them. They're very, very athletic and uh, do a lot of wonderful things. And with that, we have uh, a lady from the Rocky Mountain Over the Hill Gang, Janice Johnson. She has joined us tonight, and she's going to tell you a little bit more about the Over the Hill Gang. Thanks, Janice, for joining us tonight. Hi, Mary. It's wonderful to hear your voice again. Um, I, won't, I won't take long, um, 
But as Mary said, you know, we're very, very active. We offer a really wide range of outdoor activities. The one thing we do is we hike during the week. We rarely lead hikes on the weekends um, because most of us are fortunate and are retired. Um, we lead primarily A and B hikes. Occasionally there's a C hike thrown in there, but it's gonna, we're going to offer things that meet a wide um, variety of, of fitness levels. Um, we also offer bike rides every week when the weather um, allows. Sometimes there's two or three and there are different levels of the bike rides. Now, hopefully we're getting snow up in the mountains because we love the snowshoe. And um, so we offer a wide range of snowshoes every week as well. And each winter we have a hut trip and in the summertime we have a summer camping trip. We also offer social activities every month. Um, the highlights are probably our summer picnic and our um, festive holiday party. We also do a sort of a formal annual meeting. And then every month our social committee volunteers organize some kind of an outing. It might be go-karting, it might be um, art exhibits, it could be a play or a happy hour, testing e-bikes, all kinds of stuff. Um, so if you're interested, I'll hang around for a little while afterwards in case you have questions. Thanks. Thank you so much, Janice. Again, um, Rocky Mountain Over the Hill Gang is a wonderful section. I can't recommend them high enough. They have, uh, the last I looked, uh, I believe uh, last week, they had almost 925 members. So quite a uh, strong following and a lot of people that are very active in it. Then you see here on the screen, the Bobcats. That's another a section that we have a lot of participants in it. Uh, they tend to be a group that um, doesn't have as much social activity involved as the Rocky Mountain Over the Hill Gang might have. Uh, they tend to be uh, out there to get out there on the trail and go gung-ho hiking or do some cycling. Um, so they don't tend to have as much social activities as Rocky Mountain Over the Hill Gang. They are talking about um, maybe throwing a couple events in, so wait and see on that. They usually do their events during the week also, and it's open for everyone. So um, it is open regardless of your age. And again, a very popular group. I just pulled numbers for them today, and when I pulled numbers for them, they are at about 950 members in it. So a lot of different diverse um, people and groups that you can socialize with and have fun with. Trailblazers, 21 to 40 year old um, group, as you can see there. It must be nice to have that much energy. I look at them and I'm like, oh, can you share a little bit of that energy, please? Um, they are uh, one of our strongest groups too, are one of our most growing groups. And uh, quite a bit of our membership is in this age range. And as you can see here, they like to summit mountains. They like to cycle. They like to snowshoe. They like to cross country ski. Uh, they like to uh, get out and do rock climbing and ice climbing. So all sorts of wonderful activities. So if you have somebody that is in this age group and looking at becoming a member of the club or you're looking at maybe a gift membership forum for Christmas, we highly recommend that you take a look at having them join the Trailblazer section. Backpacking section, also again, another one of our uh, very popular sections. This one is a fairly new section. It's only been in existence a little over two years, but it's been one of our most successful and fastest growing sections. We had some backpacking trips that were on our CMC calendar before that, but nothing that was really geared toward or specifically um, in the interest of backpacking. This section came into um, being two years ago and again has turned out to be one of our most popular sections. Obviously things are winding down now for 2021 for them. They will get uh, things kind of underway by way of emails and just reach out to each other and hey this is starting to go on in uh, probably March or April of 2022. They will continue to send out their newsletters uh, regardless of whether it's backpacking season or not so you get a lot of 
um, updated uh, wonderful presentations and other things to take a look at while you're waiting to actually start backpacking. They uh, kick off most of their backpacking trips will start in late May or early June. And uh, with the weather being the way it has been this year, they were actually able to um, continue backpacking and their last set of backpacking trips actually went out the second or third week of October. That's unusual, but as we know, this weather is a little bit unusual too. So uh, normally by October, the backpacking is not an option because we have snow in the mountains. But as we know, it's not been a typical year. Uh, this is a really strong section. There is over a thousand uh, members in it. Our fly fishing section. Again, it's kind of curtailed now for the year 2021, but it will start up again in March or April of next year. As you can see there on the screen, they have fly fishing trips in the schools and clinics. They will have a monthly speaker when they get things underway and events. A lot of times they will do uh, fly fishing trips where they just go out for a hike uh, for the day and hike out to a river on the Front Range area, but sometimes they do trips. Um, a couple of years ago, they did go and do a fly fishing trip all the way over to Moab on the Green River, and that was a very highly successful one. So again, uh, that is the fly fishing section. Just take a look for it on the um, main uh, cmc.org page. Photo section. This is another very, very popular section. Um, believe it or not, the two photographs that you're looking at there on the screen were actually taken with cell phones. Uh, the cell phones we know are getting so good, the technology with the cameras that they are um, almost comparable to a regular camera. They meet uh, at the building, CMC building up in Golden. They um, are everything from amateurs, um, basically somebody that says, well, I have a camera or I have a cell phone, but I don't really know anything, up to almost professionals. And a lot of times, a lot of the professionals will help um, mentor and help teach the beginners. Uh, we were very fortunate about two years ago that on our first floor of our building, they had taken a lot of their photography from their section and had um, pictures scattered throughout the first floor and pretty, some pretty amazing photography. I was really blown away with how beautiful the photography was. So how you find out about getting on to trips and events or what's going on, or maybe you're interested in taking a course and how do you go about doing that? Well, the easiest way is to check out our CMC calendar. Again, you're going to go out to cmc.org. That's our main page. And uh, about a third of the way up on the, um, or I'm sorry, two thirds of the way up, a third of the way down on the main page, you're going to see a set of blue tabs. The third one in says calendar. If you click on that and go into that, that's going to take you to our CMC calendar. As you can see, there's over 300 adventures that happen uh, during the year, including on Christmas Day. We usually have one or two events that are going on on Christmas Day, sometimes a Christmas snowshoe um, event or maybe a hike or cross-country skiing, something like that. So the um, easiest way to find out what's going on is go out and check on the CMC calendar. A lot of people say, well, how often do they um, post uh, events? And things go on to the calendar almost daily. So we tell people to check back frequently, maybe every four to five to six days. Trips, well, they range from easy day hikes to snowshoe trips and exposed terrain and peak climbs. You can see here one of the um, climbs that they have been on in the hiking. Isn't that a gorgeous view? Uh, it looks like it was a pretty uh, strenuous hike, pretty steep coming up, but what a reward to be able to sit there and take a look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So uh, all the effort that you put in, you're met with this beautiful view and uh, what a beautiful place to sit down and maybe have a, a drink of water and a sandwich or something like that and take in this uh, gorgeous view. 
So again, everything from easy day hikes and up to um, very technical climbs. And we'll talk about that here in a few seconds, um, our hiker classification, so that you can kind of get more familiar with that and what might be appropriate for you. And there it is, as, even as we speak. So hiker classifications. When you're looking at one of the postings on our calendar, when you click into it and you see the description, it will say this is a, um, a B hike or uh, this is a, a moderate A, as Janice Johnson from the Rocky Mountain Over the Hill Gang was talking. She said most of their hikes are A and B hikes. Well, this tells you what you're looking at then as you're looking in that description, what you can um, probably anticipate or look forward to that is going to happen in that particular hike. As you see there, A, it can be up to eight miles round trip. I've seen everything from three miles up to the eight miles. Uh, so again, the trip leader will be really good about putting a description in there to kind of let you know what's going to happen. Or you can gain up to 1,200 feet in elevation. A good example of that is there in Golden, the South Table Mountain. That would be considered an A hike. B up to 12 miles round trip or up to 2,500 feet elevation gain. Bergen Peak, which is outside of Evergreen, that's considered a B hike. And again, as you see there, it's up to, so it's not necessarily um, going to be 12 miles. They don't hold that steady. You can see everything from, you know, like I said, you'll see postings anywhere from three miles and up to uh, what they say is the 12 miles. See, now you're starting to get kind of technical. So you're going to go up to 15 miles round trip or up to 3,500 foot elevation gain. It's still not quite a technical um, climb or a hike, but you're starting to kind of go in that general direction. And then you can see there uh, the hiker uh, classification D that you're at 15 miles or over 3,500 feet. And you might have some tech technical elements that are in your hike. Good example of that being Long's Peak. And if anybody uh, has been up on Long's Peak, you know that you have uh, a lot of boulder fields and stuff to uh, kind of try to get through. So that's where you start to see your technical elements. Our calendar. Well, this is, uh, again, the calendar that you're going to click into again. If you're looking out on cmc.org, the main page, a third of the way down, you'll see the blue tabs. The third one in from the left is calendar. Click on that. When you click that open, this is what it's going to look like. Obviously, it's not August. Um, it's now November. But again, this is how the calendar will come up for you. Uh, category, everything, that drop down arrow will let you go ahead and go in and maybe specialize on something that you're looking at. Maybe you're looking at um, something that is cycling, or maybe you're looking at something that involves uh, rock climbing or something like that. So uh, otherwise, everything will put everything on the calendar for you. This is what they call the traditional calendar view. You see off to the right there, the little thing that says list view that looks like a tablet with the little blue um, box around it. That's the other way that you can take a look at this calendar. And I think we can click into that. There we go. And once you go into the list view, it's the same information, but now what has happened is instead of looking at a traditional calendar, they have everything listed for you in a chronological order so you can see it there by date you have over on the left side your title there's the rocky mountain over the hill gang they went to the lowry beer garden and had a happy hour on august 16th and they said that they had um available uh 29 tickets tickets what that means is that basically that they have 29 spots or 29 people can be on that so um, you can see right down underneath that Beaver Brook full join the standby list. That means that all the spots have been reserved. We do encourage people to get on the standby list. A lot of time, as we know, people's plans change or things come up that you can't go. 
So you can cancel. If you are on the standby list, then there's a good chance that you will go ahead and be able to get on to that event and go. So we do encourage people to go ahead and get on that standby list. So again, it's kind of your preference whether you want to look at it in a calendar view. Again, if you're looking at it in the calendar view, you can click on the event. If you like uh, looking at it this way, which this is kind of my preference, I got to tell you that I prefer looking at the, the list view because I can go uh, grab my um, date real quick and then go see what's out there. And again, like I was telling you before, don't uh, presume that if you take a look at the calendar once a month that you've seen all the events that are going to happen for the month. We have trip leaders that will put on events continuously throughout the month. I mean, I can't stress that enough. Uh, I will look down the calendar today and I thought earlier that I had seen all the events for this weekend. About an hour later, I clicked back into the calendar and there were five more um, hikes that had come on that trip leaders had put onto the calendar and were open to um, be signed up for. And uh, some of them look like some fun hikes. So I was looking at that going, wow, this is gonna be a good weekend to be outdoors. And it looks like the weather is gonna be back to being um, more summerish than winter. So it probably is a good weekend to be out there. Once you have decided that you have an event that you're really interested in, we see here this is uh, an event that happened on Sunday, August 29th. What you can do is click literally on that particular description and it will now take you into the trip details, meaning it's gonna take you right into the heart of that event. It's telling you that it's on Sunday, August 29th, which is good confirmation that you clicked on the right event. It's telling you that the start time is at eight o'clock in the morning. There's your leader, his cell phone number, and his email. All of the leaders will put that information out there so that you can contact them if you have questions or you're not uh, really sure that um, maybe this is an event that you're up to. It says a moderate A down there as far as the classification. So you're saying, well, I'm not sure if I'm uh, good enough to go on a moderate day. If you have questions, just get in touch with the trip leader. Uh, he, down there, he's got trail mileage, it, meaning that they're going to do six and a half miles. So you know kind of what you're um, going to be doing from um, start to finish for that day. Elevation gain, it looks like you're going to um, gain about 1,300 feet. And again, it's a hike. If you want to go ahead and register, uh, you just go ahead and click on to the information page and register in there. If you're a guest, you can uh, register through here, although we encourage most of our people now to actually be CMC members with the COVID, COVID protocols. Uh, we are asking that we have um, masks um, if you're in a um, carpool situation or you know, if you're in close proximity to each other, once you're out hiking, uh, you know, six feet away from each other, you can take your masks off and stuff like that. But um, so we're kind of encouraging it that it is CMC members, although we can take a look at having a guest. Again, that's where you're gonna wanna get in touch with your trip leader and uh, kind of discuss that with that person. This is where you would go ahead and sign up. If you're a member, you're going to just uh, go into cmc.org and over on the right side, member uh, sign in. You just click in there and go ahead and get into your own member profile and you can sign up from there. Helpful trip tips. I keep uh, stumbling over that with my words also. Um, I think the order on this is reversed. The one that's down at the bottom, have fun, should be the one that's up at the top. Because obviously when you go out on our trips or whatever you're doing with a CMC activity, we want you to have fun. That's what we're here for. That's uh, what CMC really prides itself on being. Uh, trips from all CMC groups are open to members regardless of your home group affiliation. So what's that mean? Well. You live here in Denver, so when you join, you go and sign up for the Denver group. 
that is your kind of your home base, if you will. But from there, you're welcome to uh, join any one of our groups throughout the state on any of their activities. Uh, example, maybe you're looking out on the calendar and you see that uh, the first part of December, maybe the first weekend in December, that the Roaring Fork group that's based out of Aspen and Carbondale and Glenwood, that they're going to be doing a cycling ride up uh, the Rio Grande um, cycling uh, lane trip, lane trail, which is uh, kind of an old narrow gauge bed that they've turned into a wonderful bicycle route that goes all the way from Glenwood Springs up to Aspen. And you're like, hey, I'm going to be over in Glenwood and I would love to go cycling. Fine, go ahead, join. We would love to have you join with that group. You just sign up like a normal um, trip here in Denver. So again, anything that you see, maybe there's something going on with Gore Range, which is up out of Vail. Um, please feel free to sign up. Again, be respective. Um, you know, if you know that you need to cancel, please get canceled because there are gonna be people on the waiting list probably that would love to go and take your spot. Cancel if you can attend online, uh, usually is the first uh, line of action most people take, or you can go ahead and notify the leader. Again, if you see the trip and it's already full, go ahead and use the wait list, but please don't double book, meaning don't sign up for about three or four trips within the same weekend. Expect that the trip may go longer than scheduled. That I can't stress enough. Um, on all the hikes I've been on, or uh, uh, two weeks ago, I think it was, we went out to the Wild Animal Sanctuary, and uh, we had anticipated with that one that we would be back by two in the afternoon. We were all having such a fun time with that one that we didn't hit Denver until almost 5.30 that night. So if you have um, maybe puppies at home that uh, you're going, oh, I need to get somebody to come in so that they can let the, the dogs out to um, take care of business or, you know, you're supposed to meet somebody. Please anticipate that your trip is going to go longer. We all stay together on the trip. No person left behind. That is one of our safety protocols that we um, abide by. If you're out hiking, um, we take care to make sure that everybody um, is hiking safely. We're not going to rush somebody, so we will stay with someone, uh, but we do want to make sure that we all stay together. Be respectful of your co-hikers and your leader. Oh, that's just good common courtesy. We all know that. And a lot of times when you're out hiking or you're doing your activities, uh, you get chatting, you meet friends, and these become some of your newest wonderful friends, and they end up being lifelong friends. Be um, very respectful of your leader. Again, remember they're volunteering their time out there to do this. Leave no trace. That I can't stress enough. We need to be very respectful of Mother Earth and this wonderful state of Colorado. Pack it in and pack it out. Please don't um, leave anything behind. Respect wildlife and be considerate of other visitors and leave what you find. Please don't pick up all the flowers and the rocks. And again, have fun. Outdoor education. We are a strong proponent of outdoor education. You see there, they are looking at their topo maps, topography um, maps, nicknamed topo maps, and they are doing uh, compass readings. Those are taught in one of our classes that's called Wilderness Trekking Schools. A lot of people say, why am I learning compass skills? Well, I'm here to tell you that uh, that could save your life at some point in time out in the back country. Um, cell phones are wonderful. They have GPS on it. But as we all know, if you get into certain areas, there's no cell phone coverage. If you get into a canyon or something like that, uh, you could be putting yourself into a, a dangerous uh, situation. So we have all sorts of courses that uh, cover all sorts of outdoor education. So let's take a look at um, some of that. Well, one of our most popular ones is our CMC Youth Education Program. And again, we like our acronym, so we call it YEP. You'll hear us refer to it as YEP. And having come on the screen, you see here a wonderful young gentleman named Josh 
who is just a wonderful asset to the YEP program. And he's going to talk to us and tell us a little bit about YEP. Thanks so much, Mary. Um, my name is Josh. I'm the manager of YEP, our youth education program, uh, which was started in 1999. Um, and before our COVID hiatus was serving over 8,000 youth per year. Um, so large capacity um, youth education program, which is made possible in so many ways by all of the networking we can do within the Colorado Mountain Club with experienced people um, who are passionate about teaching youth um, about the outdoors, how to maneuver the outdoors, and also how to find the sense of place in the outdoors and, and that sense of passion that I know that we all have. Um, and you can see we work with K through 12, um, trying to do active learning within schools, get students outside of the classroom um, to fulfill some of that uh, Colorado academic standards within kind of a, a mountain education facilitation stance. So um, tomorrow I'm actually going out with an elementary school uh, to take them on a nature hike up North Table Mountain. So lots of, uh, lots of um, opportunities um, to get youth outside. If anybody's interested in volunteering with us or just finding ways to support the program, we love to have um, the support of the whole CMC community. And it's one of the things that allows us to support youth the way that we can. Um, so feel free to reach out to me. My email is all over the website under the youth education program section. Um, we do year-round adventure courses actually coming up this winter. We have a few winter winter camps for youth um, that um, legal guardians can open and roll them in an expedition base camp with rock climbing, slacklining, team building, um, snowshoeing and snow shelter camp, as well as an overnight camp at the American Mountaineering Center. Um, and these camps are for ages eight through 12, as well as some for 13 through 17. So if any of you have kids or better yet, if any of you are kids and really wanna come uh, do some really fun active learning outside, uh, you can find more information on our website. Um, we also do outdoor leadership training for teens um, and really try and just build um, leadership in um, hand in hand with outdoor experiences and using nature as a catalyst for wellness, for leadership and for all of those skills that translate into the real world. So um, thank you, Mary, for letting me have my little uh, my little talk. And it's great to uh, virtually say hi to everybody. And I hope that I get to run into you um, in person soon. Thank you so much, Josh. I can't say enough good things about the YEP program. One of my favorite memories of YEP, um, there are so many of them, but one of my favorites is about three years ago, they brought in a boys and girls club um, with youth that were uh, probably about nine to 10 years old. And on the first floor in our building, we have a climbing wall. And most of these kids had never been out of um, the central part of Denver. So coming to Golden alone was quite an adventure for them, let alone that the fact that they were going to get to climb on our climbing wall. Uh, I had never seen such shrieks of happiness and big grins and just all sorts of um, pleasure from these kids that they were actually getting to do something like this. So it was quite the treat to be able to see these kids partake in things that um, probably they never would have had a chance to otherwise. We talked earlier about the uh, WUFA. Again, we love our acronyms and WUFR, Wilderness First Aid and Wilderness First Responder. We offer both programs. First responder, you're getting into um, a lot more technical. It almost becomes an EMT type of level, although it's not EMT certified. That's a different type of, of course learning that you're going to do. But the woofer does tend to be um, a lot more technical. So if you are in a position where you need that type of training, it involves almost a week of um, learning and then um, all sorts of different um, exams to get you certified. But both of these programs are very popular. We have them ongoing. Um, they're open to everyone, including non-CMC members. We um, do our certification through a um, organization called Backcountry Pulse, and then very wonderful feedback and positive results and feedback we get from our members or non-members that do take that course through that country pulse. Uh, WUFA, if you're a member, it is $225 for the tuition, $245 for a non-member. 
you are certified, your certification will uh, be in place for you for two years. A lot of um, companies actually do encourage their employees to get the certification for uh, being able to respond to um, uh, accidents or something like that. Uh, WUFA is required to become a trip leader, so we are always encouraging people to become trip leaders, and we hope that uh, at some point in time, if you've joined the club, that you will look at doing um, that and becoming a trip leader also. WUFA is going to be one of the things that you need to have certification in as um, um, becoming a trip leader. You gain access to the leadership scholarship and other Certificates that are covered by the scholarship include our avalanche safety and our climbing instructor. Avalanche safety will be coming up. Uh, we are looking at getting some of those courses underway probably toward the middle to end of January and February, again, depending on snow conditions up in the high country. So some of our Denver group schools that we have are um, wonderful experiences. This happens to be a, a one that is a one-night seminar. We have completed these for 2021. They will start up again in 2022. This one is an intro to hiking safety. Again, it's a one-night seminar. It runs for about three hours. Uh, you can see there are some of the things that they're going to be talking about there in the pictures. Uh, lightning, inclement weather, being out uh, recognizing that you might be in danger, as you can see there, um, that um, you might be in imminent danger of being struck by lightning, what evasive uh, action to take, or um, how to safely take cover. Uh, wild animal encounters. Um, I was hiking over uh, in Glenwood Canyon about a month ago, and um, I probably had just missed um, a bear. Um, there were tracks on the trail, including wet paw print and um, some other signs of a bear having just been there. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a good idea to be obviously safe in that type of a situation. And there on the right, unfortunately, this has now become um, a matter of fact way of life for us here in Colorado, whether we want to or not forest fires and wildfires. So what to look for uh, if you are in danger, how to try to minimize that, how to safely get out of that. Again, the intro to hiking safety will be starting up in um, first part of 2022. Probably the first course will be in March or April. Day hiker school. This has become another one of our very popular schools. It is um, something that kind of goes along with the Wilderness Trekking School, which is one of our most popular schools. Uh, it has um, curriculum that is very similar to it. One big difference, though, between the two schools is that this one will be online classes and in-person field days. So you can do this more at your pace. Uh, with Wilderness Trekking School, once you sign up for that, there are five classroom um, nights that you'll go to, and they happen in uh, five weeks. So you go once a week, and then you have your field days. Some people were reporting back to us that this was wonderful. They were really wanting to do the trekking school, but they weren't able because of their life um, events or work uh, life, they weren't able to sign up for the Wilderness Trekking School as easily, so the Day Hiker School came into existence. This one, you can do it at a little bit more of your pace, or you uh, can go online, and, you know, maybe you're having a bad night, a sleepless night, and you decide that you want to go online and do a class at 2 o'clock in the morning. You know, I hope that you can go back to bed and go to sleep, but um, if you want to do an online class, you can do that um, and uh, take care of that. And then you will have your in-person field days. So, um, Day Hiker School does meet the prerequisite for wilderness trekking school requirement of many of the other CMC advanced schools. And we'll talk about that here shortly. A lot of our rock climbing and our ice climbing uh, courses 
our Alpine schools, they do require either the um, WTS Wilderness Trekking School or the Day Hiker as a prerequisite. For all skill levels, it's for new hikers and for experienced hikers that just want to really hone your skills or refresh your skills. You can see there um, the school director for that is a gentleman named Mike O'Connor. There is his email information as well as his phone number. We encourage you to get in touch with him to set up um, a time for you guys to talk or uh, to go ahead and set up a schedule with him to go ahead and get your online classes started and then uh, look at when you might want to do your field days. Again, you're doing this on your own time schedule, so it's not quite as um, regimented as the de uh, Wilderness Trekking School might, uh, might be. Wilderness Trekking School. It still is our most popular course that we offer. And again, if you have the time that you can dedicate to it, it's going to be five uh, nights. They usually meet on a Tuesday. They are um, kind of wrapping things up now for their fall session. They have two sessions a year. They have the spring and the fall. The spring session in 2022 will be open for enrollment probably the last week of January, first part of February. If you are interested in the WTS school, I highly recommend taking a look at the calendar and then just starting to kind of watch it toward the end of January and February. It's one of our most popular schools, as I was telling you earlier. They will enroll about 100 people. And you say, well, gosh, that sounds like a lot of people. What am I going to get out of this? Well, what happens is uh, you are in a classroom setting, but then you are divided down into groups of 10 people, and you have one to two instructors that will be with you in that group. So you do get a lot of individualized kind of one-on-one -on -one, um, tutoring and information. So um, it's it, again, it tends to be just something that works out I hear so much wonderful Pete, positive feedback from so many people and, and members over the years that this was one of the things that really helped them um, become comfortable with being out in uh, the back wilderness, either in the summer or winter. Um, one of the things that I can't stress enough is the map and compass skills, because I've actually had two occasions where I had to use compasses um, or otherwise would have been very, very lost. Again, you can't depend on a cell phone when you're out in the back country. You may not have GPS, you may not have coverage. Weather, we have Chris Spears from Channel 4 that will come in and do a presentation and a talk on uh, how to read clouds, what to look for, how to handle lightning and snow. Um, then the unexpected night or emergency in the back country. You can't rule that out. Hopefully that never happens to you. Uh, the gentleman that runs the intro to hiking school, uh, the one um, one night seminar, he, um, or intro to hiking safety, I'm sorry. Um, he gives the example of he and his wife were uh, from Ohio. They had moved out here. They went hiking, not realizing that Colorado terrain was very, very different from Ohio train, terrain. And so they were out in the back country for a lot longer than they anticipated. And then his wife fell and broke her leg. And um, they actually had to spend the night out on the trail before they were able to get her out the following morning. So how do you handle an emergency or an unexpected night out there? Avalanche awareness. Um, again, we look at the uh, weather right now and go, well, that doesn't seem to be a problem. But at some point in time, we will be getting some snow. Sometimes uh, this weather, when we get the snow and then we have warm weather and then we get the snow again, will create even more avalanche danger because the uh, snow gets very unsettled. And um, that's when you are going to see even more problems with avalanches. And then finally, the leave no trace practice again, which I can't say enough about. So again, Wilderness Trekking School, I highly recommend it. It is also one of the prerequisites for a lot of the other courses that you might be taking a look at.
backpacking school, again, uh, very popular class, and it um, is offered in the first week of June. You can see um, topics include gear and clothing, navigation, uh, water filtration, weather, animal encounters. That will be offered in June. I'm very sorry. I was talking too much and got my throat dry and started coughing here. Uh, the technical climbing schools, <laughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. Again, up there, you can see that the re prerequisites are the trekking school, day hiker or backpacking school. And then you can see down into the technical climbing school courses that you're into rock climbing, um, lead climbing. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry. Intermediate snow, advanced snow in your alpine climbing schools, your basic ice climbing. Um, a lot of people say, this is something I probably could never do. You might surprise yourself and find out that it is something that you uh, have a big interest in and that you want to go on and do. Backcountry Ski Touring School. We are in the process of probably changing the name on this to more of a cross-country ski touring school. Uh, we haven't quite settled on the name for this yet, but this will be coming up in December. And again, I apologize, everybody. I got a very dry throat and nothing like coughing in your ear here. It includes one lecture um, school that you will go to, one course, and then three on snow ski days. Uh, they will teach you proper skis and gear clothing and how to um, do your diagonal strides and downhill maneuvers and climbing maneuvers. It's a wonderful school. Uh, take a look for it out on our calendar. Ascending hike series, that's over for the year, but it will start up again uh, next summer, probably in June. Um, a lot of people say, you know, one of my goals has been uh, being here in Colorado that I would actually like to go out and summit one of our um, beautiful 14ers that we have here in Colorado. But I've never been hiking to that uh, degree of difficulty, and um, I don't know that I can do it. Well, the series will start with an easy A hike, and you progress to more difficult B hikes. And um, there are a series of them. You'll see them on the calendar. They will be marked as an ascending hike series. So you can sign up for the uh, series with the actual goal that in September at some point in time, you will go ahead and some of the 14er. They did so in uh, September of this year. And um, um, we had a lot of wonderful feedback on it. Again, uh, go ahead and visit the CMC calendar and search for the ascending hikes. Outdoor conservation. Well, again, um, we are very privileged to live in this state and very lucky to do so. And uh, we need to give back. So we have stewardship crews and snow rangers that go out to help take care of our different trails. Uh, one of the things that is very popular now, you can see there in the um, lower hand corner, RIMS, our mobile app. Uh, you collect data while you're hiking that you can help out with um, getting that information to the Forest Service. Uh, maybe you're seeing some damage on one of the trails or maybe uh, one of the parking lots is totally full of people and has been for a couple days. There's no parking. You can let um, the Forest Service know stuff so that they can help manage um, some of the different parking areas that are or some of our trails. Action alerts, you can sign up online. They are active. The conservation section is active in wilderness legislation, the Colorado Wilderness Act. They've been advocating for that and the core act of 400,000 plus acres. So again, 
Uh, conservation is one of our most important parts of Colorado Mountain Club. And again, we uh, would love to have you volunteer if that is something that you think you would love to be involved with. We would love to have you that uh, you are volunteering to help take care of this beautiful, wonderful state of ours. And with that, we are coming to the end of the presentation. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'm about two or three minutes after eight o'clock. So I apologize that we are just a few minutes late, but we are out on Facebook. Go out and find us under Colorado Mountain Club. We also have the CMC Trailblazers Facebook page. We're on Instagram and we're on Twitter. So again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really, really appreciate it. And I don't know if um, <laughs> if you, I just saw the thing. Thank you, Jane. Uh, we do love um, this wonderful uh, state of ours as well as this wonderful Western United States. So um, we um, very much appreciate everybody taking care of it. So thanks again for attending. I don't know if there were any questions that needed to be answered. I saw that Claire was doing a wonderful job as normal answering the chat box while we were going. So um, I don't know if there are any other questions that need to be answered. If um, you need to get in touch with us, Claire and I are available through the office. Our emails are clairejoseph at cmc.org and mine is marybradley at cmc.org. We would love to talk to you. Any questions that you have or anything that we can help you with, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. That's what we're here for. And I can't believe I'm about to say this, but happy holidays to everyone. Uh, we are fast approaching that time. And uh, I hope everybody has um, very happy holidays and uh, that 2022 will be a kind year for everyone. Thank you so much. I have a question. Sure. Um, I was just wondering, do you have an equivalency test or course? Because I have a lot of, not a lot, but I've been doing a lot of mountaineering in my past. And I was just wondering, and, you know, I'd like to just jump in on some of them. And some of them kind of seem pretty basic. I would hate to have to take them all from the beginning. That's an excellent question. And yes, we do. We um, have what you can what you can do is um, get a waiver. It's called, and that happens for a lot of our different courses. If um, say you are interested in ice climbing, just use that as an example. The um, instructor for that course, what we would ask you to do is reach out to them either by way of their phone or their email that they have listed, and have a chat with them and tell them you know, look, I have all this experience from previous years, and um, what do you think? I, I don't really think I want to uh, take this or that I need to take that. And we do have all sorts of waivers that become available for um, people with that type of experience that can go on to a higher um, skilled class and not have to go through the basics all over again. So the easiest way to go through that is just to reach out to your individual instructor that you think you might have already gained the experience um, to have covered that course and just have a chat with them and then go from there. So yes, very good question. And yes, we encourage that. We don't want you to be bogged down taking courses that you really don't need to be involved, but be prepared that we're probably gonna try to get you to be a volunteer or become a trip leader. So I will give you fair warning. We'll, we'll um, try to have you do that. <laughs> I'd love to do that. Oh, good. We'd love to have you. Thank you so much. Great, great question. Anything else? Anybody else? All right. Well, thank you once again for um, joining us tonight. And hopefully we will see you soon. And again, with that, we will bid you good night. And uh, thank you to Claire. She did an awesome job like usual. And thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.